and your wiki will have a panel um, which will be by Ryan Lane, Timo, which I don't know how to pronounce your last name, sorry, and Marcus Glazer. Okay, hello, thank you. Um, so first of all, I need to clarify a few things. Um, it's not like, like, as you have seen in the program, um, testing should be the second track now. Um, apparently the first track has been canceled, so we um, start now with testing. Hi, uh, I'm Sumana, and I'm giving. Uh, so, so there's, there's an entire track today of discussion of media wiki development, and some of these talks were sort of overlapping in a way that wasn't going to be useful and was just going to end up being redundant. So, the talk that was going to happen right now about Wikimedia technology staff communicating with the larger Wikimedia community has been combined with my talk just in a, like an hour or two, whatever, just after the coffee break, which is how to get what you want from the media wiki developers. So, it was just sort of a combination and moving around of stuff. Just wanted to let you know. And in response to some questions about the name of my talk, how to get what you want from the MediaWiki developers, I would like to revise that title to how to ethically get what you <laughs> legitimately want from the MediaWiki developers. And uh, yeah, it will be slightly less time than it would have been. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so... Um... <laughs> Uh, in, the, in the next 30 minutes, we want to talk about testing and MediaWiki, so if anybody wants to leave now. <laughs> um, uh, there has been um, a considerable movement uh, in, in, in the testing things um, over the last year, I guess. Um, and um, I think what we should do here is shed light on um, testing as a whole uh, from a like, uh, high level, very high level, the big picture. That's what I said in the subtitle. Um, so I'm going to show you in short what I understand that we do in testing at the moment, and I hope that uh, Ryan and Timo can um, correct me if I'm wrong. And then we do Q&A, um, so if you have any questions about testing, and uh, I think there are some issues we need to talk about, um, then uh, I hope <coughs> we get a nice discussion. So first of all, um, testing, uh, I mean... Uh, I think everybody in this room does know why testing is important. Um, it makes developers sleep better um, because um, you somehow know that at least the mistakes you made before um, are not the ones you make now. Um, so um, testing can be done on different levels. Did anybody in this room actually write a test for MediaWiki yet? Okay. Does anybody want to who didn't write a test? Hey, cool. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> okay, um, so testing, it can be done on different levels, so there are different testing strategies. Um, first of all, um, what you do is you test units like small bits and pieces of your code. Um, you know that if you um, have a, a PHP function, for example, and you want to um, put into that function values A, B, and C, you want to get out the... Um, for example, uh, a function that is uh, called sum, and it sums up um, A and B. Um, if you put in one and two, then you want to get three as a result, I hope. Uh, otherwise, uh, the function is not working correctly. So that's unit testing. Um, and most of the, uh, of the tests in, in detail are done on the unit testing level. Because when your units don't work well, um, then the, the whole um, program will not work well. Um, next level. Um, I got this from the Wikimedia article on testing, so um, it must be right. Um, next level is integration testing, which um, uh, goes up one level and looks how the different uh, parts of the uh, of the software integrate with each other. So you're not testing one function, but you're testing a whole bunch of, fun of functions, and you see if they work together well. Um, an example would be. I, I maybe the do edit. Um, so if you want to test one single edit in um, uh, a, a media wiki, there is a function do edit, which calls a lot of other functions. Um, so it, it, a lot of things depend on each other. And that might be an example for, um, say, for integration testing, I guess. Um, 
And then you have the very high level, that is system testing, where you see, where you have a look at, or you test uh, whether the application works as a whole. Um, so that would be, for example, you press the edit button, type in something, press save button, and then see if the um, stuff you typed is actually being saved. Um, okay. What do we have in uh, MediaWiki? Um, for unit tests, uh, we do PHP unit. Um, that has been a uh, part of tests for a long time. Um, and uh, as I understand this now, increasingly other parts of the software are being tested with unit tests. Um, I have to admit that I do not follow the unit tests, PHP unit tests so much, so I don't really know what's the current state um, of these tests, but I see that um, there are a lot of unit test commits in the SVN, so I guess um, there's been done a lot of work on that. Um, so since, um, yeah, vector skin and media Q 1.17, resource loader and all that stuff, there has been increasingly the demand for um, JavaScript unit testing, which is the client side um, of, of the media wiki software, um, and uh, QUnit has been used on that part. And um, yeah, maybe, can you say something about that? So uh, uh, as a JavaScript developer, the interesting thing about JavaScript testing is that um, functions are not the way they used to be in PHP. In PHP, um, except for a few very rare edge cases, there's only one way to execute the function and it will always return the same if you give it the same. But in JavaScript, it behaves different on different browsers. So for example, in Explorer 6 might return a different value for something than something on Firefox 5. So that's why QUnit testing is a lot more complicated than PHP unit testing because you have to keep track of not only if it works in a, in a perfect browser, but if it actually works in the non-perfect browsers. Um, and for that, we use uh, several frameworks to automate these tests because we don't want to run them manually every single time. Of course, it's recommended that if you change a vital part of the program that you test before you actually make the commit to subversion. But um, we cannot expect that developers have a complicated setup such as uh, the Wikimedia Foundation may maybe have, or um, that you have every single browser that we support on your own home computer. And for that, we use frameworks such as Test Swarm and Cruise Control. Maybe we can talk about that later. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so um, QUnit as it says, is uh, mainly testing, is it unit testing? Um, it can also be um, integration testing, that's what we talked about, and I, I guess that's part of the discussion, part of this um, track. Um, so, and, and then, um, until recently, um, there was, uh, um, uh, was a track on, on Selenium, which is a um, kind of surface testing, you, you somehow, you remote control the browser, so you don't really, uh, execute JavaScript um, functions, but you um, you tell the browser to click somewhere, to type in something, to click somewhere else, and that is part of the um, of the system testing part. So um, you do really high level tests, and um, there has been um, in, in in the last year there was a, a test suite, a smoke test suite um, that was programmed, uh, which tests um, the, like just the basic functionality of MediaWiki. Um, it makes about I don't know 300 clicks. Um, and, and, and tries to test all the main functions. Um, and this is used for smoke tests, which basically see if something burns um, and, and smoke braces. Um, okay. So as Timo said, um, there, apart from those um, testing frameworks, there are um, like test execution frameworks. Um, one is Test Swarm, um, where you can crowdsource tests. Um, so um, tests are executed not on your own computer, but you ask a lot of people to execute those tests in their browsers, um, and, for, and that's because then you get a lot of different combinations between browsers and operating systems, and you can test like Mozilla on Linux, on Ubuntu Linux, um, or uh, Internet Explorer 5. Point something on a Windows <laughs> 32. Um, I don't know, uh, some even strange uh, combinations. Okay, and then we have cruise control or um, a PHP under control, um, which is an extension for cruise control, and that um, executes tests on um, 
on triggered events. So um, normally um, you execute those tests like once every day um, and you can execute a whole bunch of test suites. It's not bound to unit tests, it's not bound to Selenium, but you can, or, or test swarm, um, you can trigger those tests above, uh, you see in, in the above section, um, on some basis. And uh, there was considerable effort uh, in um, the foundation to uh, have a framework that triggers execution of tests on any SVN commit. Um, but I don't know if that's still the case, because, um, yeah, it is. So I, I usually um, um, explain the frameworks in a little bit differently. Um, so uh, test swarm and uh, uh, cruise control both are frameworks to automate the unit tests. Um, so for the PHP framework, we use PHP unit, and for the JavaScript framework, we use QUnit. And uh, whenever somebody makes a commit to subversion related to JavaScript, then test swarm picks that up and automates the test to all the clients that are currently connected to the swarm. And if you then look back at the test swarm page in a few minutes after you commit, you can see that it uh, works in Safari, it works in Chrome, it works not in Windows, it works, um, it works in Firefox and Windows, but not in Opera, and all the different combinations that you can imagine. And at the same time, when a commit is made, it also uh, triggers cruise control to run the PHP unit tests. So basically, whenever a commit is made, both these frameworks um, uh, run the test of their control on their uh, own framework. So we do actually have a need for something like Selenium, and, and we've recently dropped support for that from at least the foundation perspective side. Sure. Um, but we do still need something like Selenium to do these system level tests in an automated fashion. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's very difficult to maintain. So um, maybe this is something that we can uh, have more volunteer interaction with so that it can be maintained in a much better way than just me trying to automate all of the different operating systems and things like this and have daemons. And so, um, and system level testing as a whole, I think is something that we need a lot more of, especially in uh, a way that's more like the foundation sites. And uh, I'll be giving a talk later in the same room about this. And it's um, an environment that we're building to allow these kinds of things and to allow more automated, or uh, manual testing and hopefully more automated tests of environments that are very similar to ours. It's uh, an environment that's gonna be called labs. So the question I had um, when I was talking about tests is basically who, or when I was preparing this test, who needs to run tests? Um, and I guess there are three levels, um, although I'm not sure if this is an exhaustive list. Um, I guess that live code, um, I mean the code that's really been deployed, uh, needs to be tested thoroughly, but I guess it is already tested when it goes live. Um, but still, um, um, I think that you know when you commit small changes, then uh, still the software should be tested. Um, then you have the um, say the core developers, um, which test the the software um, in itself, and they, I guess, um, are doing a lot of uh, depending a lot of these automated tests. Um, that's what what I think. I, mean, I don't know if if it's really the case. And then you have extension developers, which usually do not do a lot of testing, uh, apart from, uh, say, a few um, good, well-maintained um, well extensions. And uh, the question is, can we um, get those people also to test their code? Um, and um, how can we do that? So, um, for example, the what, what I, I was wondering is, um, can extension developers um, use the uh, given testing infrastructure um, that we have in MediaWiki that core developers use, or is it uh, a different kind of um, uh, environment? Um, should they set up their, their own environment? Um, right? Um, I think people should have their own environments to do some development in, but I, I, I definitely think that we should have an environment for everyone to work in in a common way. Where we're all doing things and in an environment that is set up in such a way that we can easily push to the site. I, mean, I know not everyone uses a Wikimedia style architecture, but what the core projects are written for and what a lot of us are writing for is stuff for the foundation and for our sites. So 
Yes, uh, I think that we should have a common environment, and that is um, what the lab's environment is meant to be. So uh, uh, the PHP unit framework in MediaWiki uh, allows um, to extend the unit test for your own extensions. You can write uh, a test suite within the extension uh, directory to uh, run certain tests. And whenever this extension is installed in a wiki, for example, in your <coughs> local host wiki, and you run the PHP unit test from the command line, then these tests will also be run. So um, in itself, it's fairly easy to uh, maintain this yourself. But um, uh, on, uh, on uh, the MediaWiki uh, test form server and on the Moose control server, um, there are several extensions installed as well. So the, the, the most uh, popular extensions are the extensions that are installed on Wikipedia. Uh, will, um, for the most part, also be automatically run on every commit. Okay, are there any questions so far? Yes. The test, uh, the the unit testing server that the foundation maintains, um, cannot publicly be, be added an extension to it, um, because there are over I think there are more than two thousand extensions currently in subversion, uh, so we cannot test them all automatically. There's simply no resources for it. But um, especially for PSP unit testing, it's uh, a very lightweight to run them yourself. It's you only have to have a, a localhost wiki, install the extension, and run it from the command line. Um, the reason Wikipedia has uh, several extensions installed on a test form server is that so that whenever before we de deploy the code, we are sure that not just the core works but extensions as well. But um, on request, I think it wouldn't be that big a problem to <coughs> uh, to install several extensions on on request. So, sure, uh, if you're interested in that, contact us and uh, we'll see what we can do. I would actually like to be able to scale for us to be able to run all extensions for definitely all the extensions that everyone wants. To to test anyway, because not everyone actually is going to write tests with their extensions, but I think if, if there is a need for this, I think we should try to scale for it. That's good news, right? Um, anybody else? Uh, question? Well, since you asked, uh, I mean, it's all fun games when you, uh, when you talk about how to run tests and um, who runs the tests and so forth, but uh, what about the tests themselves? Who writes them and do you have any criteria on the coverage Um, okay, um, I guess at the moment it's like the developers are supposed to write their tests, um, which is one way of doing this. Um, and um, I guess there are criteria, um, <coughs> you can find some of them on um, uh, mediawiki.org. Um, testing, I think um, there is some criteria within the page for Selenium Framework. Um, and um, I... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, PHP unit. I'm not sure if it's a plugin or if it's in PHP unit itself, but has um, a method to see how much percentage of the methods that your classes contain are currently uh, covered. Uh, we use this for MediaWiki itself in, in the core. Um, every few days or weeks, we, r we run this to see. Uh, if there are any classes or methods that have been added recently that don't have unit tests, so that is certainly very helpful to give insight. Um, do I have anything tested? Are there tests that are not used anymore? Is there classes that have like one new method that changed and doesn't have a unit test anymore? So that's very useful for that. Um, in terms of cri cri criteria, um, I think every developer uh, has their own workflow, but uh, the workflow that I personally would recommend is uh, maybe a little bit extreme, but uh, when writing a new framework, I usually write the unit test before I write the actual framework so that you can always see uh, what it is supposed to return. And then that's what I uh, would like to see more. And um, as you say, Nate, that it, it shouldn't be that extreme. But um, when being realistic, I think when I compare it to most extension developers, that's currently not the case yet. But that's certainly where I want to go, and I totally agree on that.
Either a plugin or the core feature of PHP unit is to see what the current coverage is, so you don't have to manually check that. Does that answer your question? I think for MediaWiki core, the coverage is 60%. Yes, 60. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm more of a JavaScript developer. I'm not that familiar with the PHP unit framework. So the the, the unit test flow has a completeness test plugin that I wrote, and I think for the MediaWiki core JavaScript, the coverage is almost 90 percent. I've been working really hard on that. 90% of all methods, including the constructors, yeah. So when counting the actual methods, not the number of classes, uh, the coverage is really high. For PHP, I wouldn't know. Would have to ask, uh, or try to run the command and see what the current coverage is. to correct on that, we actually uh, don't have to have the infrastructure yet as the way we, we want it to. Uh, right now there's an experiment on a tool server that runs the test form uh, infrastructure and there's a virtual machine in which we're in cruise control. Those are actually both uh, experimental. We are currently, um, there's a foundation project for uh, continuous integration testing and Chad, Ryan and I are mostly, mostly working on that to migrate all of these to a real physical server in, 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 in the cluster. That would uh, that has enough resources to, like the other person asked, to also run more extensions that we have enough resources. But this framework is currently not set up. My, my point though is not necessarily about mechanics of actually getting the tests run regularly. My point is more about mechanics. Uh, it's more about the architecture of actually having tests and having a standard way to write tests. And as far as I can tell, you can trust me on that framework is more or less in place. Um, yeah. So. Given that, are we going to have some sort of uh, like a, are we going to have some sort of crash course, some sort of um, like page on video or some sort of presentation, something so that core that has been around for a while but not been paying too much attention to testing can actually uh, can actually know what they're supposed to do to add tests to their code. I really thank you for that question. Um, so uh, for. Selenium, um, there is a page and, and there are some like how to's, how to write tests. But I think what we should aim for in, at mediawiki.org is have an integrated a page that is an entry point for all those people who want to write tests and where the style guides are on, where uh, like the details are on how you write tests. And I guess, um, I mean, if, if anybody wants to, I'd be, I'd be willing to start that page. And um, I invite all of you to, to just join in. and. and write this together, right? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your question with a question. And this is actually a question to the, to the develop, develop, development team. Um, so we're already doing kind of courses in um, code review, right? Yeah. So can we also do courses for testing as well and, and invite exactly the community right. in with us? Because that would be, I think that would be very useful. called unit testing, um, which has a subpage for PHP and one for JavaScript. Uh, the one for PHP is fairly elaborate already. Chad and uh, Asher uh, work really hard on that to make that better. I don't think there's an actual step-by-step -step tutorial yet. I would love to see that. Um, and if needed, I will write one myself. And for JavaScript, I'm already working on such a tutorial. 
So yes, uh, that's certainly needed and it will, it will be there. Cool, so we got five minutes left. Does, um, any more questions? No? As soon as we can actually say ourselves that our coverage for the core thing is good, we should have that figured before we say to others that it must have a test because that wouldn't be fair, as you can imagine. But um, yes, right now there's uh, several new jQuery plugins that have been submitted uh, the last few weeks, and uh, some of them have been removed, some of them have been re-added. They must have uh, unit testing. That is uh, slowly becoming their requirement, yes. Um, well, since, since Are you interested in, and will the infrastructure support that uh, if, uh, if someone develops uh, 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 a big test suite and provides it to you? In what form do you mean? Uh, in, that's, if that should be your, uh, your reply, in what form do you need it, and in what form? Uh, are you interested at all? Sure. Can it be integrated in a, a, a framework? Because as I understand now, the test case is per um, extension, and then for four, probably per, uh, per module. So the, the, the framework PHP unit, yeah. um, whenever a PHP unit test is being made, it extends the class for PHP, ba PHP unit ba base test, and for the command on that for execute. So there is an existing framework, there's a, a standardized structure on how to, there's only, basically there's only one way to write a unit test. And um, yes, uh, via Bugzilla or from SVN, uh, patches, whatever, uh, configurations all are accepted. Yes? I guess for, for Selenium, I wrote a, a test suite that um, allows you to, um, uh, uh, to build actions on a higher level. So you can, like you have an action, uh, a test for editing, uh, and then you can customize this test with um, all the object-oriented uh, ways you need to. Um, so uh, I guess that's what you're aiming at, is that um, to, to have like prototypes of test, test cases and then uh, just uh, move them around. Um, so there has been done some work um, and um, I think it would be cool if, if we could um, go further on that. Um, yeah, that's what I see. Uh, which should make it easier for developers to test at least the standard cases or set up some test environment. So I mean, I would love to have an environment like this. It's just it's very difficult to maintain. So hopefully, with within the labs project, we can have something where uh, anyone that is interested in building this environment will be able to build it themselves as well. What I see, um, uh, basically, one of the um, challenges about writing tests in MediaWiki is that MediaWiki is highly configurable. Um, so you don't want to test just one set of configurations. Um, and there's been done some work on, on reconfiguring things um, dynamically for tests. And I guess that's my last slide. Um, that's um, one of the things I want to um, yeah, 
point you at. I guess there are some common grounds for all the tests we, we have, um, QUnit, PHP unit, uh, Selenium tests, which is you need some, how you need clean resources, database files, you need to switch configuration, um, and you need to track a testing session sometimes, uh, especially when you do integration testing. And I was wondering, um, could we not uh, find a way to to somehow abstract these common grounds and have a common before test something suite, um, which is it can do all these things for all the tests, and then you can after like um, having um, this whatever testing framework um, uh, control the resources with the configuration. Um, then uh, have execute having ex to, to execute the uh, the test then. Uh, Rowan? Um, so, so PHP unit has this. Um, Q unit doesn't actually need it because it doesn't even need PHP to work. Um, I guess Selenium needs this too. Yeah. yeah. So you, I guess you could integrate it between PHP and Selenium, but Q unit JavaScript is kind of irrelevant in this context. Well, there is some configuration, yeah. but um, it doesn't. I guess Timo can explain this better because he actually wrote this stuff. Okay. Yeah, so um, again, the documentation is uh, really pending. That's one of the things that makes this really hard, and that's what uh, at least one of the high priorities to actually uh, be able to, for to enable for other people to help with this. The documentation needs to improve. Um, then, in terms of uh, teardown and uh, startup for a unit test, that's uh, that's what you're referring to. Um, that exists for PHP unit. It um, it uh, creates a new database and it uh, tears it down afterwards. Uh, for for QUnit testing inside the browser, this is not needed. Uh, for the test swarm, this will be needed and is currently also supported. Whenever a new uh, check um, sorry, whenever a new revision is being checked out, it gets a clean database and a clean uh, media clean install. Are there any more questions? Okay, so I think um, we have used up the 30 minutes around this. Um, thank you, Timo. Thank you, Ryan, for um, being on the panel. Um, yeah, I guess that's up to next track.